Denise Tsai and her husband Dino Foy have been the forerunners in the aftermath of Cyclone Idai. Zhi volunteer Zhang Yumei has mended her relationship with her mother-in-law over the years through love. Welcome to Headlines and Laurie Chen. Thank you for joining us. The second Buddha Day ceremony in Mozambique was recently held in Maputo. It was attended by more than 2,000 people. In this short but dignified ceremony, participants stayed in their proper dialect, sharing their passion and positive life attitude with all those in attendance. <laughs> The Buddha Day ceremony participants sincerely sang the Buddhist song with an accent. The ceremony was short and full of local characteristics. While most people cannot understand the song, it is actually in praise of Amitabha. Local volunteers are singing it in the local dialect Shona. Local volunteers have been in Savala for two months already. Therefore, upon returning to the CG office, they are very happy. I am very grateful to them. Even though they did not have the time to practice, everyone still mindfully and happily participated in the Buddha Day ceremony. The ceremony tables are decorated creatively. Besides the lotus that are made with PET bottles, there are also coconut shells, mango leaves, and lemons, which shows the local custom. The second Buddha Day ceremony in Mozambique is held at the Tsuji office in Maputo, attended by more than 2,000 local volunteers and members of the public. I seem to have seen heaven and hell here. Although they lack material goods, they are spiritually wealthy because Dharma Master Zheng Yin's teachings have guided them onto the correct life path. They are also gathering their strength to help their fellow countrymen. Seeing joyfully, local volunteers are very happy and excited after attending the Buddha Day ceremony. They also expressed their gratitude to the medical professionals. They will continue to do their share to bring hope to more people in Mozambique. Before the Buddha Day ceremony in Maputo, Mozambique can take place, many volunteers came to help out with the preparation work. One special decoration was the eco-friendly lotus flower that were made from recycled PET bottles from Taiwan. I want to introduce this. Did you bring this from Nanto? Yes, I brought them from Nanto. It was a bottle for a special drink. I used four of them to make one flower, a never withering flower, a recycled flower for the ceremony for the local volunteers. I brought 84 of them. This is Suji's home in Maputo, and here are many mango trees. Today's free clinic will be held under the mango trees. The volunteers are busy preparing lunches for the patients, the doctors, and the volunteers. Hello. Hi. Hi. And what are they doing? Here they cooking uh, rice. The rice? rice? Oh, yeah. yeah. Rice. Water. 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 These are the white runner beans. They'll boil the beans in the hot water. After they're boiled, they'll put the beans with the rice and vegetables together. But I don't know what will become of them. We'll know for sure at noon. There's sand at this place, so these Buddha Savas will be barefooted for the Buddha Day ceremony later. However, they seem grounded by standing barefooted on this land. They are preparing for the rehearsal, so they all look very focused and calm. To tell you the truth, I also want to take off my shoes now and step on this yellow sand. Hello. Stay in Mozambique, the two city volunteers, also a couple, that have been the forerunners while before Cyclone Idai hit, are Denise Tai and her husband Dino Foy. For over two months now, they have been the leading force for disaster relief missions. From seeking local resources to providing love and care to affect the residents, let's meet this amazing couple. 
Impoverished residents have to face more suffering in the aftermath of the natural disaster. People were wild because they were desperate. They wanted help, they wanted food, they wanted shelter, and they wanted warmth. By the end of March, Beira was still without electricity. We had to rely on generators. Back then, we didn't have any place to stay at. There was the question of where we were going to lead the volunteers. Being the first city city in Mozambique, city volunteer Denise Tsai shoulders great responsibilities. In the aftermath of the cyclone, her husband and her have been staying in the disaster area. Her husband Dino is in charge of communicating and seeking resources from the government. Denise Tsai led local volunteers to assess damages and provide care to the affected residents. I feel that we cannot do much by ourselves. I am very grateful to the local volunteers. Before the other charity organizations came, we are the first aid group that came to the disaster area. The main point is that we offer immediate assistance. With the help of local volunteers from Maputo, city volunteers overcame the differences in ethnicities. The affected residents have gotten used to the sight of city volunteers in their uniforms. CG, we've been here for two months now, and uh, so they now understand us. I mean, when you pass with a car or walking around with our uniform, they will say, I mean, they will greet you, they will say, Gan'an. Everyone is really, really, really touched with what we did. The team is the one that is writing. What time they write? What's that you write? In addition to distributing the aid supplies to help affected residents rebuild their homes, the couple is about to help local residents by providing educational resources. I am grateful to Dharma Master Zhen Yan for giving us a good start on education. The children have promised us that they will study hard now that they have received stationary supplies. The good thing about CG is that we are not only using CG International, we are not only using CG Taiwan, but we want to start a chapter in Mozambique that is going to be CG Mozambique. Recently, the leaders from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints paid a visit to Siji all the way from the U.S. Siji representatives hosted the guests at the Shindianjing Si Hall and had a very productive exchange with them. A positive affinity has been created, and further future collaborations are in the works. Although it was sprinkling outside the Xindianjing Si Hall, it did not damper the mood of the volunteers. This was because the long-awaited meeting with the leaders of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was finally about to take place. Well, we've been honored to be here. It's a, it's a wonderful thing you're doing, and you're setting a great example. And in many ways, what you're doing and what our church is trying to do are the same. We're all worried about how to save and help our Heavenly Father's children get along in life and relieve suffering and and helping those that are struggling. Oh, it just feels so sad. Yes, yeah, so sad. Carefully feeling the clothing fabric, it's hard to imagine that this was made from someone else's discarded trash. This completely shocked the visiting guests. I think it's it's an amazing thing to be able to take what is somebody else's trash and instead of making our earth a bad place to create something that's useful and helpful for mankind and what a great and wonderful thing it was funded the foundation concentrating on listening to the report prepared by Tsuji the two entities have created positive affinities with one another from charity to humanistic medicine it's with great hope that they will get a deeper understanding of Tsuji's missions we shared all about international disaster relief missions our environmental protection efforts also promoting vegetarianism. For the medical portion, we had Deputy Superintendent Zhang share all about our health care system and the mission of to safeguard and protect life, health, and love. Even though the religion and beliefs are different, the mission to make the world a better place for all is exactly the same. It's with great hope that through this exchange, the concept of great love will be spread far and wide. 
Today volunteer Zhang Yumei is a Taiwanese new immigrant from Vietnam. In the beginning, there were a lot of issues between her and her mother-in-law. Nothing seemed to work. Fortunately, there were Tsuji volunteers who came to support her. Now they have a great relationship, and she dedicates herself not only to her family, but to other Taiwanese new immigrants as well. When I first came here, I didn't know anyone here, and I didn't speak the language, so I couldn't communicate with my mother-in-law at all. So what was I supposed to do? Then one night, I decided that I was going to learn the language from asking my husband to help me. So every night, if my husband was home, I would ask him about various Taiwanese pronunciations. I would hear the pronunciations in Taiwanese, then I would write down phonetically how they sound in Vietnamese in my notebook. For example, I would ask him about a certain word in Vietnamese, like sending money or something, and he would tell me how to say it in Taiwanese. Then I would write it down, how I hear it, so I can look back in my notebook to learn it. One time, I had asked my daughter to teach me how to get on the good side of grandma. Then my daughter told me that, Mom, you're already doing a great job. It's just that she hasn't felt your love yet. It's okay. Keep working hard. One day, she will feel it for sure. Because she had shared with me in the beginning how she was having trouble getting along with her mother-in-law, I gave her some advice. Through my own experiences, I told her that how she treats her children, she should use the exact same way to treat her mother-in-law as well. You should care for her and love her unconditionally. And when she finally feels your genuine love, then she will come around. I feel coming here, I get to learn a variety of things about everyday life, such as many of the volunteers here all have multi-generational families, when the husband, children, and grandparents all live under one roof, so it's really great hearing about how to problem solve when one encounters some difficulties or has misunderstandings. When the younger generation gets along with us, it's better, isn't it? It's a whole lot better than me being alone all by myself. Don't you agree? They can take care of us. To me, it's a normal thing. Nowadays, many Taiwanese people are looking for overseas brides. She is a very filial child. Here, there are many people that are married as well, but they are not as good as her. After my husband had passed away, she told me that she was afraid that if I was home alone, I would age faster. So she invited me to go to the recycling station with her. She said that it would help me if I went over there. I actually listened to her and started going there. In fact, I am way beyond blessed, because even though I came from a faraway land, all the way to here, there are many more people who have it worse off than me. They have to work to make ends meet for their families. As for me, all I have to do is take care of the kids and cook. Only my husband needs to go to work to make a living. Plus, he supports me 100% in being a Siji volunteer. He is always there by my side every step of the way. So I am one of the lucky ones. I feel really grateful. Speaking of dedicated city volunteers, there's a 63-year-old Quanzhou recycling station volunteer, Su Qingzi. She used to go to the local temples and worship the various deities. Then seven years ago, she met a city volunteer who took her to the recycling station. She's now a very selfless person and knows that merits are gained through doing, not simply just asking for it in a temple. 
driving an electric tricycle with a fellow volunteer through a village in Jinjiang is Quanzhong Recycling Volunteer Su Qingzi. She starts each day collecting recyclable goods. It will always be completely packed full before she heads back home. After unloading it all, neighbors and past colleagues will all come and help sort it all. Dama Master Jinyan said that doing recycling is a way to give of yourself and also to protect Mother Earth. Now I know what it means to save our planet. I wasn't so clear on the idea before. She has changed a lot since she started doing recycling. After she started becoming a recycling volunteer, she has become very selfless. She will be constantly thinking about others' needs before hers. Just like what her friend has stated, Su Qingzi has made a huge transformation. Not only is she a happy recycling volunteer now, but also a recyclable goods magician. Any recyclable materials that come in can be remade into other useful items under her skillful craftsmanship. I had picked this up when we were out collecting recyclable goods. This is a food wrapper. It's what they used to wrap cantaloupes with. So when I saw it, I thought that I could turn this into an eco-friendly lantern. She will read books and then take the lessons from it and incorporate it into her daily life. My mother would always actively do what she has seen and heard from other sources. Now, Su Qingzi enjoys being a recycling volunteer each and every day. It brings her immense joy. She even wrote a song to actively promote recycling to others. It wasn't until after entering the city family did I realize that our merits are gained from actively doing good deeds. It's not gained from just asking for it. We must give of ourselves in order to accumulate merits. We're the blessed ones when we go out and help those who are in need. We can't just sit at home waiting for blessings to come. TGK recipient Dan Nu, who lives in Surabaya, Indonesia, used to be a construction worker. However, five years ago, he fell off a tree, leaving him half paralyzed. Fortunately, TG stepped in to help. He was deeply inspired by the story of the Bamboo Bank era, and so he made his very own 10 can coin bank. Let's meet this receiver, who has now turned into a giver. 54-year-old Dan Nu was left paralyzed in his lower body due to a work accident that happened five years ago. <laughs> I was climbing onto a tree and then accidentally fell off. It was a tall tree, so I broke my back, causing an irreversible spinal injury. He wasn't able to go out to work after the accident, which made him very depressed. Fortunately, Tsuji volunteers would come regularly to care for him. They would encourage him and also show him the story of the Bamboo Bank era. It made a deep impression on him, so he produced a homemade tin can, wanting to accumulate his love to help others as well. It's not much. I can only give a little. What I can give is nowhere near the amount of assistance that Tsuji is providing me. Yeah. He had cut out a small hole in a tin can and then started to put in whatever amount he could on a daily basis. Then whenever I would go visit him, he would always hand me the tin can, saying it's the little that he could do to try to help others. After that, I would go over each month to collect his coin bank. At first, Dan Nu was really against the idea of going outside of his home. Then after encouragement of the volunteers, he would head out each day to share about Siji with his neighbors. He would also inspire them to give what they can to help others. No longer trapped by his disabilities, Daniel's life has become so much brighter. Today we will introduce you to the Hualien Mennonite Christian Hospital's Prosthetic Center. It's staffed with many experts in the field, one of them being Chen Hongbing, who went to the U.S. and brought back the hydraulic pressure technology to Taiwan. Let's check out our report. Examining this prosthetic Chen Hongbing from Hualien Mennonite Christian Hospital works tirelessly to address the needs of each patient. 
wants to solve their problems and he continues to make adjustments as he knows the prosthetic is not finished yet. When patients come the first time, I ask them what they want the most. I tell them not to think of what they have already or what they use now. Tell me the inconvenience caused by your physical and mental impairments, something that is stopping you from doing what you really want. If you still don't think you can do this, then we will set easier goals to accomplish. Simulating various real-life environments is critical, requiring constant tests and returning to the office to adjust the hydraulic pressure of the prosthetic knee joint, as well as the angle of the sole of the foot. Each part is examined one by one. He hopes to help the patient adjust to real conditions and improve their comfort. The design of this whole system is safety first and then comfort. Next comes the ability to walk realistically. The biggest challenge, I think, for us is to give these patients prosthesis that makes them feel like they can do anything. I hope the new generation of people with disabilities in the future won't suffer unfair treatment again. According to Ministry of Health and Welfare, there are more than 300,000 people with physical disabilities in Taiwan. They all need auxiliary equipment or prosthetic limbs to help maintain their lives. This is the service that the Mennonite Christian Hospital specially caters to. The National Health Insurance Bureau gives a little money for a basic prosthesis foot. Usually it's just left at home because it hurts and is painful to wear. When you think about it, if there is a feeling like you are walking on thin ice, then every day will be fearful. Traditional prosthetic limbs have difficulty adhering to limbs, and long-term use can cause new wounds due to friction. In 2004, Mennonite Christian Hospital established a prosthetic center offering rehabilitation, physical therapy, functional treatment, and prosthesis. In addition to accessories, the team's one-stop service included the new vacuum prosthetic barrel, which begins with case evaluation and leads to tailor-made products for patients. This is already the standard practice in Europe and America. So now Europe and America are actually very few people wearing traditional practices. In Taiwan, there are no more than five such hospitals offering this service. In Taiwan, we don't have such a school specializing in practices. There are no people here that can do services in our hospitals. Insufficient resources in Taiwan led him to go to the United States to obtain an official prosthesis qualification. He has continued to use his own resource and time to offer better quality services for patients. The initial estimate is that Taiwan needs at least 300 doctors, like hoping to meet demand. Not content to only provide such services in the hospital, these specialists also travel from Hualien to Taidong to make house calls for patients who can't visit the hospital. These caring medical professionals are an important life support for these patients with disabilities. For the 11th year in a row, the City San Diego Liaison Office participated in annual Earth Fair. To promote the message of environmental protection, many Tsuji volunteers, Tsuchins, Tsusaos, and their families came to help out. Thank you for watching. See you next time.